Welcome to chapter 2. In this chapter we'll be going over JavaScript and the JavaScript library jQuery. In this video we'll basically be going over the fundamentals and the basics of JavaScript. <coughs> so let's talk about excuse me, exactly what JavaScript is. And it was originally called ECMA script and was created by Netscape, the same company that created the Netscape Navigator browser. Um, JavaScript is basically the scripting language of the web, the client-side scripting language. It runs on the user's computer or the client as opposed to languages like PHP which run on the server. Um, it's used for a lot of different things, we'll go over that in a minute. Um, JavaScript has nothing to do with the Java programming language. Aside from the name, it has absolutely nothing to do with it. So, some uses of JavaScript. There's a, a ton of things that JavaScript is used for, but here is some of the more common functions. Um, we have HTML form validation uh, to validate fields to make sure that required fields have some content in them, um, validating email addresses, numbers, ranges, um, all kinds of things. Uh, event handling if you want to say have something pop up when you click on a link um, you would use JavaScript or uh, uh, libraries such as jQuery to do something like that or if you want say um, if you want an image to change when you hover over it things like that dynamic elements on the page uh, it deals with the did the DOM or the document object model um, which refers to basically anything on uh, not just on a website but in the browser. Um, it powers HTML5 features, uh, features like geolocation, um, web storage. They're all called H they're HTML5 features, but JavaScript is what does the decision making and the and and pretty much just is the powerhouse of those elements and features. Um, search and form autocomplete. We've seen this and with search engines like Google when you start to type it'll it'll kinda uh, give you some suggestions that's all done with JavaScript or some JavaScript library uh, animations if you want to make things move on a website or um, change shape things like that uh, jQuery Ajax and MooTools there's a whole bunch of uh, libraries that are all written in JavaScript that can do just some awesome things on the web. So adding JavaScript to an HTML page is fairly easy. You can see we have a basic HTML structure. We have our HTML head body tags and you can see that within the head tags we have these script tags and this is where we would put our inline JavaScript. So by inline I mean that we're putting it right in the HTML page as opposed to in a JavaScript file. So we can do that as long as we have our opening and closed script tags and we include all the JavaScript in the middle. We have another way of including JavaScript and that's through an external JavaScript file and we do that with the same thing with script tags. Uh, this type type equals text JavaScript that is it's good practice to have this even it should actually be up here as well uh, it's not needed it's not gonna break anything if you don't have it but it is good practice uh, and then we have the SRC attribute the source attribute much like an image file which points to the JavaScript document which it has a dot JS extension so variables, if you have any experience in any programming language, then you probably know what variables are. Um, they're basically a placeholder um, for pretty much anything, text, integers, um, objects. And like any other programming languages, the JavaScript variables do have some rules that they have to follow. Um, for instance, variables should always start with a letter. Um, preferably a lowercase letter, although you could use uppercase. Uh, they are case sensitive, so um, this x equals 4, capital X equals 4, is not the same as lowercase x equals 4. Um, to declare a variable, we can use the var keyword. We can say var x. 
uh, which will make x a variable, but we don't need to have this var. We can do it just like this if we want. We can just say x equals 4. Um, so essentially these two are both declaring x a variable. Um, this one isn't giving it a value, it's just declaring it. These two here, I should actually make this a lowercase. Uh, these two here are the exact same, the last two. They're doing the same thing. They're creating a variable called x that holds the value of 4. So it doesn't matter if they have the VAR or not. So arrays, most programming languages also use arrays, which are basically just a variable that holds more than one value. And in JavaScript, there's a few different ways we can declare and add values to an array. Um, in this example, we're saying var cars, which is we're declaring a variable called cars, and we're saying equals new array. So we're saying that this variable is an array. Up to this point, this first line, it is an empty array. There's nothing in it, but it is in fact an array. Now below, we can actually add values to each, I guess, pocket you could call um, in the array. So we can say cars brackets uh, zero equals Honda. Arrays always start with zero. Uh, it's a very important thing to remember. Uh, the second value is Toyota, and the third is Ford. Now this here, we can do the same exact thing in this format. We're saying variable cars, so cars is a variable that holds an array and here we're actually including the values in the array declaration okay so this is Honda Toyota Ford it's the same exact thing as this we could access if we if we write it this way we can still access Honda with car zero it's the same exact thing so loops loops are used to run the same code over and over until a certain condition is met and there's a couple different kinds of loops. Um, in JavaScript we have the for loop, the while loop, uh, and the for in loop which is used for usually for arrays. Uh, we also have the do while loop but it's not used too much. I don't think I've actually ever used it um, but that's something that you can look up if you want. And essentially loops all do the same thing but they're there's usually a, a bit of a difference when choosing which loop to use. Um, for instance, the for loop is usually used when you know the exact number of times that it's going to run, while the while loop will is usually used when you don't know the number of times. And the for in loop, like I said, is usually used with array objects. So here we have a bit of loop syntax and the for loop. So basically we're going to say for and then open some parentheses and we have three, three uh, parameters I guess. The first one, and they're separated by semicolons. So the first one says variable i equals zero. So we're saying that there's a variable i with the value of zero. And the next condition, so this is just pretty much declaration. The next parameter is the condition. So we're saying as long as i is less than five it'll do what's in between the parentheses. Now this last part, this i++, plus plus, that's just an increment. That's saying that we want to increase i by one each time around. Okay, so at the beginning of the loop, i is going to equal zero. We're going to do what's in between the, the curly braces, which in this case is um, print, out the, print out the text number and then the i which is the variable and then a line break so it's going to do that every time until i is less i'm sorry until i is not less than five all right so what this would do if we ran it it would print out number one number two all the way to number four it wouldn't actually print out number five because we're saying if i is less than five if we do want it to do one through five then we can say i is less than or equal to five I hope that makes sense. Now uh, the while loop, we're pretty much, we're actually doing the same exact thing here, just using the while loop. So we want to declare the variable just like we declare any variable. And then we want to say while, and then in the parentheses we want to put the condition, which is I, if i is less than 5. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write out number 1 
um, through 4 because we don't have the equal sign here. If we want 1 through 5 we can say if i is less than or equal to 5. And then finally we're incrementing much like we did up here just in a different way. And this is, it's, it's easier to show you than to try to explain it so we will be doing this in this section. I'm sorry not in this section in this chapter so you can actually see how it works. JavaScript functions. So functions are pretty easy to understand. Um, they're basically just predefined bits of code and we would we can create a function by using the word function and then the name that we want to give it and then we want some parentheses and if we want we can have parameters inside the parentheses. Um, this is a simple very simple example. There's no parameters. We're just saying we want this function that's called some function to write out this is some function. Document.write is it's a command that will just print it out to the screen. Um, so that's all this function would do. And this here, we, we're creating the function here, but it's not going to actually do anything until we run it. And to run it, all we need to do is type out the name of the function in the parentheses. So this would actually print out the text that's here. Okay, objects. Uh, in JavaScript pretty much everything is considered an object. Um, a string, a numbers, dates, arrays are all considered objects. And objects have properties and methods. Properties are basically characteristics. And we can use, we can define properties with dot syntax. So we want to say the object and then dot and then the property name. Okay, so here's an example. Um, we're using a, a variable which is a string, hello, uh, and this is an object. This variable greeting is an object. Now here we're saying variable x, we're creating a new variable which is equal to greeting's length. Now length is a property of the greeting variable, okay, which holds the text hello. So what this length property is, is the number of characters of the variable or of the text hello, which is 5. So here x is equal to 5. It's equal to the length, length property of the greeting variable or object. So I hope that wasn't too much. Um, we'll be going over pretty much everything that I just talked about um, in our project so you'll get a better understanding of this. Um, so that's it for this PowerPoint. Next we'll be looking at jQuery.